Life's a game. The world's a stage. And we are merely role players, where theatrical people play role playing games. I'm Matt Boothman, and I'm your compare for this studio season. Here on Merely Role Players, we improvise stories to entertain you, and of course to entertain ourselves. And we use role playing games to keep the story going places even we can't see coming, because as theatrical people, we're all about maximising the drama. Our studio is where we experiment with different formats, different role playing games, and different genres of story. And this season in the studio, we're bringing you a selection of games from the Ultimate Micro RPG book, edited by James D'Amato. Because micro RPGs are naturally pretty short and self contained, every episode this season stands alone and tells a whole story start to finish. So if you know anyone you think would enjoy what we do here, you could try pointing them to one of these episodes as a starting point. I think they're a nice little taster of how we do things. In the meantime, please take your seats in the studio. Tonight's production is about to begin. Hello and welcome. Today we are playing Event Planning in Zero G by Jen Martin. I am running today's session. I am Ellie and I will be playing the party planner. So, some of the galaxy's best event planners have gathered to plan the celebration for the Gantrafax's final malting. What an honour to be chosen for this. Of course, we do have limited time and an even more limited budget. We couldn't actually afford the galaxy's best, so some are... Fine. <laughs> Everything is fine. Happy malting. <laughs> Happy malting. So, should we go around the table and see who we have? Hello, everybody. My name is Josh, and I am playing Chef Octo Ramsey. I am in charge of food for this event. Hello, I am Nat. I will be playing Dimar the Vispar PR, and I will be in charge of guest relations. <laughs> So rolly on your arse. <laughs> Can you keep that up for the episode? We will see. <laughs> I'm Matt, uh, and I will be playing Gravelax Limited, the living company who is in charge of gravity for this event. Very important. And hello, I'm Strat. I'm going to be playing DJ Clorox, uh, who's just, you know, in charge of music and sound. And overseeing all of you and your... Fantastic expertise uh, is the party planner who I am playing, and my name is Madam Flux. Welcome. Thank Hello. you. Thank you. I hope you're all very excited to see the final malting. I mean, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. It I is. cannot wait. Good, good. I, for one, cannot wait <laughs> to see a giant being of colossal size shed its skin. Mm. Does it happen very often, this malting? Uh, yes, it happens very often, but this is the final malting, which <gasps> does not happen very often. And we can wait and see whether this particular Gantrafax will rise from the ashes of the final malting to begin the cycle again, or if this will be it. Wow. It's going to be quite the event. It is going to be quite the event. Let's hope you plan it well. Absolutely. Well, in order to do so, I need for each of you to pitch your ideas for your area of specialism. I'm going to first assign you all a random number, and the reasons for that will become clear later. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm just going to roll for them. Um, so, Chef Octo Ramsey, food, your oh. number is six. <laughs> yes, boss. Six. <laughs> six the for you. Best number. Dimar the V Spa on yes. the guest list. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> your oh, number. <laughs> Are we supposed to it be could be the same. Yeah. It's allowed to be the same. Yeah. Oh my god, okay. Your number is also <laughs> six. Setting the bar high. <laughs> <laughs> Gravelax Limited, the living company. We Do you serve. like your full title every time? <laughs> <laughs> yes, for branding reasons. <laughs> we must protect the brand. Of course, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you're in charge of gravity. Let's see what your number is. Crystal. <laughs> 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 it's 
Or the dice six. loaded. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm going to use a different one for the oh, final one. Oh, oh, so good. <laughs> Finally, DJ Clorox, music and sound. Give it to me. Let's see what you get. Three. Boom. Uh, Boom. Yeah. To fix. Not one of us. Yeah. <laughs> Getting the easy route. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Musicians. <laughs> okay, great. Well, anyone want to volunteer to go first with their pitch? I volunteer that Strat should go first. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that sounds fine. Blow my mind, DJ Clorox. Us Cloroxes, as you know, are a swarm species. So I don't just bring myself to this party. I bring ten thousands of my brothers and sisters, all as expert DJs as this crab. That's right, we're swarms of crabs. Tiny DJing crabs. This is what we're going to do. Before everyone turns up, we are going to send out a survey asking people to put in like what sort of music they like. Not like exact bands or anything or whatever from their planet, but the kind of vibe they're after. Because we crabs, we're up on our vibes. So we get all that data. I assign each guest to one of my brothers or sisters. We have 10,000 decks floating above the dance floor. We have 10,000 sets of headphones or earpieces or sonic resonators or whatever the various uh, guests of this party need. We assign them to them at the start and then everyone gets their own personal disco and they party like they've never partied before. That's the plan. Cool, so it's a silent disco. Yes. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't just want to say that. Wanted to make it a little bit more spacey. He's very good at upselling. Yeah, very good. Yeah, we're crabs. What do you expect from us? But scoping out your audience ahead of time, that sounds very smart. It's all going to be specific to them. And at any point, they can just say shuffle and uh, and listen to something else. Can't do that at Silent Disco. Bam, space. (laughs) I like the cut of your jib. Thank you. And your All us people from, where do they say us from? Maxilon 9 have excellent jibs. (laughs) Max Lawn 9. I hear it's lovely at this time of year. Oh, yes. So crabby. <laughs> <laughs> Extra so jibby. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you can see it moving from space. This will be the crabbiest party that the uh, that the universe has ever known. Mm, so yeah. the, the main components of your proposal are the, the survey and the, the technology? Yes. Okay. And I guess the rights to all the music. Very important. From all over the galaxy, we're going to need mm. every single major record and other music contraption label to get on board. Great. Do you want to roll for how successful that is? I'm sure that I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Can I yeah. offer you a delicious dice? I'm not going to use the one that kept the rolling six times. Because that's the one I don't want. Here we go. Do we have the best silent disco the universe has ever seen? Ooh, oh, really good. Oh, oh, we might do. It's okay. close. Well, that's, um, you've rolled a two, which is one away, so that is plan B. That's fine, that's fine. So it just it just means you kind of get, you get everything that you wanted, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. but on a slightly cheaper or simpler scale. What do you want to do? That's fine, that's fine. I have 10,000 brothers or sisters, but you know, I can just bring 5,000, uh, and we can assume that some people's musical tastes will overlap somehow, so that's fine. It's not personalised. Per guest, but you know we can we can maybe the VIPs can have personalised ones, and the the people that have just paid to be in the the upper circle <laughs> can have mm-hmm. you know a little bit less personalised. Um, the you know I wanted to have a big kind of light show with all the floating decks above, but maybe they don't have to be quite as uh, elaborate. Maybe they can hover there. That would still be quite a cool effect if you think of like seven thousand hovering crabs. <laughs> What's cooler than that? <laughs> You know, we can cut back a little bit, I suppose, on the quality of the headphones. I don't want to... That's, like, the most important bit. I, I, if if it's between less of my brothers and sisters getting a gig and better headphones, I'll take the better headphones. Okay, well, so, I mean, you've, you've halved the number of crabs, so I think that's a pretty hefty cut. It is. So, 5,000... I'm going to have to go and tell them all now. <laughs> yeah, you're disappointing half of them. Yeah, but there's a lot of gigs... Yeah. Crabs are easily employed in this part of the galaxy. I'm relieved to hear it. Yeah. So we're going for 5,000 crabs. 5,000 crabs. <laughs> yeah. And so high tech headphones. Yeah. Or other equivalent Absolutely. devices. Sonic resonators. Yeah. Uh, Personalised playlists for VIPs. Yeah. But 
the everyone else is just general vibes. General vibes. Yeah, and the hovering crabs are with the lights are on. I mean, that's a no go. That's a, that's a sorry. That's a you know that's a hard line. The crabs yeah. must be hovering. Yeah, sounds great. I think we can uh, incorporate this into the budget. Excellent. Thanks very much. I'll go and tell everyone. <laughs> I'll be two days. <laughs> Scuttle away sideways. Very nice. Let's uh, let's move on to the food, shall we? Hello. (laughs) You know who I am. I'm Chef Octo Ramsey. I'm one of the most famous celebrity chefs in the galaxy. I've seen your shows. You've seen my fucking shows and how fucking passionate I am about (laughs) fucking food. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, But of course you know uh, me from my mess of uh, blonde messy hair uh, and my slightly sunburnt face. But what you don't know is that I'm of course a space octopus man. Uh, I need to be doing many things when I'm in the kitchen, and so having eight arms is better than just two. So let me tell you what this is going to look like. So we are welcoming people from across the galaxies, and so we need to reflect what they like. So we need to make sure they have cuisines from every one of those nations. It'll be like a, what's it called, like a pot roast where people bring things along. We will be sourcing um, ingredients, specialised cuisines from each of these galaxies so that nobody will feel left out. There'll even be stuff for vegans and for <laughs> crab people. And... I think you mean Vogons. <laughs> the, the Vogons will be separated from the vegans. We don't want those guys to fall out. There'll be plenty of engine oil for the mechanical types that are coming from, from the, the Kronos uh, s- uh, systems and atmospheres. And uh, in the centre... No, I'll come to that in a moment. I'm going to blow your fucking mind when I tell you about the finale. <laughs> okay. All the food... It will not just be laid out and around the place. No, because that takes up too much floor space. Once people have had a bit too much booze, they might stumble and trip and fall into the mashed potato, into into the soup. So we're going to have it being served individually on tiny little remote-controlled spaceships that are controlled by the guests' minds. Very much like with my, my friend from the Crab District. They will be telepathically linked. The moment a guest thinks, God, you know what I could go for? I could go for some braised quail and cabbage Zzzzum, appearing in front of them will be a tiny little spaceship floating in front of them with the perfect portion size for them to grab and consume it will then immediately fly away there will be no clutter it will be incredibly easy for everybody to navigate it will be uh, a, a, a clean space doing all the dishes on the side I've, I've enlisted an army of invisible serving staff uh, mecha droids from the 59th quadrant of the 4th galaxy <laughs> Uh, who are willing to work and tidy and clean as necessary. They'll be completely invisible, so you won't see them coming around. They won't be interrupting our guests. We're then going to have a chocolate fountain. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Again, telepathically linked to taste exactly how you like your chocolate or your engine oil or your vegan chocolate or your Vogon chocolate, whatever it is you might want. We'll have marshmallows. We'll have other things that you dip into chocolate chocolate fountains as well uh that will be at like the centerpiece that will be the thing that everyone will move to to satiate their sweet cravings after they've consumed food from their own districts uh we'll also have scattered around the place finger food actual fingers they are a delicacy in this part of the galaxy uh so to nibble on a finger um before consuming your meal uh will tickle the guests fucking taste buds and a moose bouche uh, of fingers all of the bouches will be amused by okay. my fingers i've heard that about you booze wise there'll be an alcohol luge a, a, a frozen <laughs> alcohol luge in the shape of uh whatever it's called gantrafax uh, very classy yeah absolutely uh, the individuals will be encouraged to drink and sup of whatever booze that they wish and then right at the end a trap door will open in the centre of the space and rising up will be a giant Gantrafax cake with all his favourite ingredients in it which he will be able to consume after the malting after he's feeling quite sleepy he'll want a bit of bit of sugar if he survives uh, if he survives if not then we eat it <laughs> right okay. win win yeah. no waste don't want to see anybody going hungry and we will not be throwing away a single iota a single morsel of food that's the fucking plan fuck yes very thorough thank you would you like to uh, roll dice to see <laughs> this is how I like to allocate my budget <laughs> <laughs> See, if I roll badly now, I'll have wasted so many ideas. Here we are. So I roll. So I've got a six. Yeah, so you roll a six. A four. Okay, so that's two, two. away. Mm. So you've also got plan B. <sighs> nice. Yeah, fuck it. Cut the chocolate fountain in. <laughs> 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 they're, they're messy and people don't really enjoy them. They're very, very unhygienic. Quite so sickly as well. Quite sickly. The chocolate's yeah, yeah, never yeah. as good as if yeah. you just had some chocolate. When you mm. first go to it, yummy. By the yeah. time it's been running for a few hours, yeah. it's all... Uh, it's got a lot of vegetable in it to keep it liquid, you see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Which will keep the vegans very happy, but the Vogons will be furious. They <laughs> hate vegetable oil. They're always cross. <laughs> always cross. Well, I mean, obviously cutting that's going to cut at least half the budget. Mm-hmm. So that's Easily. that's probably fine. Mm-hmm. Are there any other aspects, though, that you could maybe scale back slightly on? I mean, I noticed the, the tiny remote control spaceships mm. that are connected telepathically to each guest's mind. Mm-hmm. Um, you did say that they can both deposit and clear plates, but then you also spoke about the droids who would be there to clear plates that are invisible. Mm. I feel like we're doubling up there. Yeah, that was more to do with spillages and lazy people just leaving their plates and stuff on the sides. It was more of like, a, mm. yeah, they're there to, to clean up and keep things clean. But ultimately, if it's not food related, it's outside my fucking remit. So. Well, true. And I just, I just feel like the tiny remote control spaceships could probably cover off serving and clearing. Wonderful idea, party planner. Mm-hmm, Absolutely, mm-hmm, I agree. Mm-hmm. Right, so we'll get rid of the droids then. Mm-hmm. They're going to be... You've not promised anything this work, have you? Uh, it doesn't matter. They're machines, so I'll just reprogram them so they think I've never asked them it. It's a good, good solution. Yeah. That's how the AI revolution starts. <laughs> <laughs> then that sounds like we're good to go with that. Let's hear about the guest list, please. Um, so, uh, Dima the Beast Bar, am I saying that right? Yes, hello, darling. Yes, absolutely. Well, I have plenty of ideas. Some of them bounce off... Uh, the ideas of our dear friend Chef Octa Ramsey, of course. I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, I think it would be important for us to have a, a multilingual herald to announce the arrival of every guest, of course. And uh, a- alongside that, I believe it should also be a policy for everyone to say "blee" as they <laughs> as they arrive. Um, it, it's the only custom that no one else in the galaxy objects to. But if the mechanicals find uh, the mechanicals find it offensive if it is not said, so it's best that everyone says it. Uh, I think it's, it's a little unusual for some species and. Some some species will obviously have to find non-vocal ways to create that mm. noise, mm. but I think it it's better than you know genocide. So. <laughs> Did you spit water out your nose? Okay. <laughs> it's better than genocide, so you know. <laughs> That's a tagline. <laughs> Right? So so that's our multilingual herald covered. And I also feel that we should have staggered entrance times, extended length of the party. So the Mardines and the Caplintos aren't in the room at the same time uh, because they do not get on. But uh, they, they are both important, honoured, upstanding uh, nations within the galaxy. So they should both be, uh, be included. They, they, they should both arrive staggered to witness the stage of the molting phase, which is most useful to them. So the the caplintos when uh when the thick downy fur is is molting, they can uh take their resources there and the mardines earlier on when it is uh merely the um the, the speckles. Yes. Yes, the speckling is one of my favourite parts. I know, it's so beautiful, yes. Mm. Mm, yes. Um finally, uh n- no, not quite finally, the uh to to your point before Chef Chef Octa Ramsey, the um I believe that we ought to have spiral tables. Vertical spiral <laughs> tables for the um for the guests who are uh both vertically and horizontally and gravitationally challenged, so people can have their own space to sit and enjoy the delicious food. And will also aid in the delivery via the little spaceships because there is more area around the guests to uh, to deliver that. And finally, we should not invite the Havaroxes under any circumstances. So I will need uh, a, a, a small part of the budget uh, dispatching uh, people to intercept any invitations, any news, any knowledge of the party's existence to them whatsoever. And is there a reason for that? Well, they're smelly. <laughs> <laughs> smelly. Yes. Good to have your expertise on that. <laughs> I have a very sensitive olfactory sense. Good to know. And if we have the budget for it as well, I would like some little spikes on the corners of the walls <laughs> to rub my face on, but that is uh, that is only if we have the excess. Wall spikes. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, I believe you rolled a six for me before, which means that yes, you're uh, welcome. my budget chances are slim, but we'll see. Pa! <laughs> hey! Oh! Josh has left the table. <laughs> I was hoping for a one! <laughs> I have rolled a one! Yeah! Yes. What have you done to the hammer oxes? <laughs> oh dear! Yes. Well, I'm afraid. 
I've got no budget available for you at all. <laughs> no guests. <laughs> there are no guests whatsoever. No herald. Not necessarily. <laughs> it just means that all the things that you've specifically laid out are not to pass. Okay. So the Havarocks are invited. <laughs> There we're not is, going Bree. We, the, we do not have the... No one will say Bree. Yeah. Uh, that was not really a budgetary thing. I suppose it was just telling people that they ought to. That's but true. Yeah. The so, walls will be very smooth. <laughs> <laughs> the walls will be so smooth The Mardines and the Caplintos may come to... Fisticuffs. To fisticuffs. And the tables. <laughs> <the> mechanical smacking. <laughs> So this might have been the highest stakes. Oh my god. That is phenomenal. I'm so glad you got away. <laughs> uh, beautiful. Hmm. So, let's move on to Gravity, shall we? Uh, Gravelax Limited, the living company? Gravelax Limited, the, li- the living company, has sent a pitch team uh, of well-to-do looking, clean-cut, uh, hipster marketing people in turtlenecks and thick glasses. Uh, and they all set up in front of Madame Flux. And then, uh, one by one, they are possessed by Gravelax the Limited, the, Gravelax Limited, the living company. Ugh. Light streams from their eyes and mouths, and they rise from the floor. <laughs> Gravity. You don't notice it until something's wrong with it. Gravity should be unobtrusive and unnoticeable, am I right? Yes. That one drops to the floor. <laughs> Burnt out. Another one rises. Wrong! (laughs) (laughs) At an event like the Gantrafax's final molting, a -a once-in-a-galactic lifetime event, gravity should be a feature. Gravity should be noticeable, even ostentatious. (laughs) You have... uh, We prepared our pitch assuming that there would be many guests from many... (laughs) From many different cultures. Maybe that's not true anymore. There might still be. <laughs> I think there's going to be more than we were expecting. Yeah. Some prefer the heavy gravity of a giant gas giant. Others, like the Splue and the Hedgehogs, prefer <laughs> much lower gravity. How do you cater for all these tastes in one single party? That pitch member drops to the floor, burnt out. Another one takes over. In a word... Rotational gravity. We propose a specially built orbital facility orbiting the molting Gantrafax, composed of many rings, each rotating at different speeds, which creates different gravitational effects along the length of the station. A cylinder, each ring of the cylinder rotating differently, heavy gravity at one end with fast rotation, Low gravity at the other end with uh, slow rotation. Not only does this allow each species, each guest, to set their own uh, level and find the gravity that suits them and that they are used to, it also allows all our guests to experience the different worlds that gravity has to offer. Have you never wanted to jump and soar like a bird in low gravity? Have you never wanted to feel yourself pressed heavily to the floor by gravity heavier than you're used to? (laughs) At this party, all experiences of gravity will be possible, thanks to the specially built facility built by Gravelax Limited, the living company. (laughs) And heavily branded by such. Pitch over! (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. I hope that you will take care of clearing up these many scattered bodies before you leave. Um, And... Please roll. That's a two. So that's four away. Yes. What does that give me? That gives you plan C. Plan C, okay. Yeah, so plan C is a decent version of what you were proposing, but with much reduced budget and resources. Gravelax Limited, the living company, is not used to practising with fewer resources. We have all the resources of the galaxy at our disposal. But... Efficiency savings are certainly within our remit. We propose a scaled-back version of the specialised facility with only three rings. Heavy, medium and low (laughs) gravity. Employees of Gravelax Limited, the living company, will supplement the experience. We have very many employees. 
And for those guests who wish to be in the lower gravity ring, but want an even lower gravity experience, employees of Gravelax Limited will lift them up and carry them around. <laughs> and for those that want an even higher gravity experience than what the reduced facility can offer, employees of Gravelax Limited will sit on there. <laughs> <laughs> This party sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> right, so a mix of um, three preset levels and manual handling. That is a, a, a reasonable description of what we are offering. Great. That sounds workable. I mean, goodness knows what attendees will have, that we'll have uh, various gravity requirements. I suppose we'll find out. on a giant space station large enough to accommodate the behemoth known as the Gantrafax, which is about to begin its final fantastic molting. Some entities are gathered to celebrate and from outside the sound can be heard of hubbub and enjoyment. And the guests can hear vibes. <laughs> General vibes <laughs> <laughs> that they've not been canvassed for, <laughs> apart from the VIPs, oh, yeah. who can hear some very specific noises <laughs> that yeah. they've requested based on their preferences. And a fantastic crab swarm <laughs> adorns the air with flashing lights and shiny shinies. It's quite wonderful to look at. Damn right. There is being served a great selection of dishes from every corner of the known world. Every single galaxy and culture is being celebrated in culinary genius. From <laughs> Chef Octo Ramsey's kitchen, carefully delivered by tiny remote control ships, each connected to the guest's mind. Uh, and they're also clearing plates for cost-saving purposes. <laughs> Everyone's delighted with the amuse-bouche finger food. and marvelling at the gantrafax shaped booze luge <laughs> it's got lots of booze running down it into the mouths and other chosen orifices of the entities there mm -hmm. also displayed a brilliant cake everyone's waiting to find out whether it gets fed to the gantrafax or to the guests based on how the molten goes there's maybe a herald <laughs> I, I think what it is is that, that Dmar has gone for the absolute budget option 
it, and she has just brought her mother along. Uh, it's a little known fact that um, elderly V spars can only say, <laughs> which is not blee, but it's close. <laughs> mm. So she's left her mother at the entrance. <laughs> And everyone that enters, the, the this elderly V spar is just going <laughs> at them. Good compromise. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. Great. You have to pay your mum. <laughs> yeah. And the, the plan for staggered staggered entrance times. That's gone out the window. Mm. There's only there's only so much one catwoman can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But people are well, entities are arriving. Yeah. The vertical spiral tables did not manifest. Right, yeah. It may be a stand and serve situation. Mm-hmm. And we don't know yet, but there there may be that the Havroxes might be. I think that's what uh, that that's what Dima is spending all her time doing is she's following every Havrox with a little air freshener. <laughs> nice, yeah, huge, discreet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all the while, everyone is um, enjoying three levels of gravity afforded to them by <laughs> by Gravelax Limited, the living company. Uh, and there are employees dotted around uh, who are willing and able to either clamp themselves around the appendage of a of a being in order to drag them down or indeed to lift them up. And and actually, this is really a branding opportunity for Gravelax Limited, the living company, because all of those employees are, you know, fully wearing the company livery. The logo is everywhere. Well, I'm glad it's worked out so well, for them, <laughs> despite the much reduced circumstances. So everything is happening. The event is in full swing, but things may or may not go well. (laughs) And to find out, you're each going to roll. Shall we all all roll at once? Yeah, go on. Okay, Okay, I'm not going to reveal it straight away. Okay. So, Josh, what did you roll? Uh, I don't know because it's got a thing on it, so that's... That's It's a six. six. Okay. Nat? A two. Okay. Matt? A six. No! Okay, and Strat? A two. <laughs> oh, no! Okay. This, this means a few things. So it does mean that things have gone badly or well <laughs> on a scale of one to six. One being a disaster, six being fantastic. So your individual scores dictate how your area of expertise has gone. But we do have two matches. We have two twos and two sixes, <laughs> which means there are two major problems that are hitting this event. Oh, no. You know the army of invisible serving stuff, oh, yes. the, the mechanicals um, that I had to let go. Um, I think they were perhaps more angry than uh, I yeah. expected, and they've hacked into my system, and the little flying mm-hmm. things are all just going haywire. Oh, and uh, simultaneously, and, and the Gravel, Gravel Axe Limited... The living company is unionising. <laughs> <laughs> so we so we have a mechanical uprising essentially yeah. okay. from the robot folk. Yeah, the underlings are not happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the gravity's all over the place. The luge is mm-hmm. flying, uh, and the little little machines yeah. are running around and attacking guests and just flying into at, each but, other. And yet, the food and the gravity go perfectly, and everybody loves them. Mm. Yeah, could could it be that um, while all the things are going haywire and there's collisions happening midair, food is therefore dropping yeah. and mixing in midair, mixing in midair, and also landing on the plates of not the person it's intended for. Mm-hmm. But although they had requested something specific, maybe actually trying dishes from across the galaxy goes very well for a lot of people. Ooh, yeah. It's not what they wanted; it's what they needed right now. Right? Mm-hmm. Could you maybe? Are there any particular dishes that you think would uh, would go nicely for any particular species? Uh, well, the stinky tofu that the smelly Havaroxes uh, mm-hmm. enjoy, uh, it, it's quite quite a, a pungent flavour. So I think mixing that with the engine oil of some <laughs> of the, the robot folk just kind of, just sort of suppresses the smell a little bit and it makes it go down, it's a bit more lubricated, so mm-hmm. it's easier to, to on the palate and to go down the throat. Do you think the Vogons and the Vegans find common ground? <laughs> No, so, they're, they're, they're always going to be in No, it. okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Is engine oil actually vegan Maybe. if mechanical creatures are sentient? <laughs> mm, big questions, big um, questions. Moral dilemma. <laughs> so then a second problem needs to arise. About yes. Our relative uh, things also going not great. Yes, yeah, they mm. go badly and there's a big problem. On, on the scale of, of bad to great, so a two is not the worst it could be. No, no. it's only one up from that though. Yeah. yeah. 
So, well, I wonder if it's the the Mardines and the Caplintos. They are in the room at the same time, and they're they're getting a bit of our. Maybe they've their dance moves yeah. are so uh, wildly incongruent with each other's that it's silent disco, and they're not noticing the the oh. others around them. And there's like they've turned into some kind of uh, West Side Story sort of dance fighting. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I like that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which is what happens when you get them together, yeah. Yeah. With any and they, sort of music. they wouldn't be able to do a coordinated dance fight if they all had their own individualized playlists. But yeah. because they're just on general vibes, mm. yeah, yeah. They, can. they can be in rhythm. Yeah, it makes yeah. it worse. Yeah, absolutely. And doing that across three separate uh, gravity types as well <laughs> is certainly yeah not helping the situation. Pretty dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that they're going to be disturbing the the general vibes even further. So then we also need to work out how individually our stuff's going bad. <laughs> I think mine kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the worst version of the plan and it's going badly. Yeah, it's going just about as mm-hmm. badly as you might expect it would with that version. Whereas, you know, the drop is worse for, uh, for yeah. DJ yeah. Clorox. I think, I think also perhaps what's happened is I have so, so so many brothers and sisters I needed to tell that they <laughs> actually weren't invited. That message didn't get through. Oh. Uh, and so in some cases went through to the wrong crab yeah so mm-hmm. some crabs that i was expecting have not turned up and about two thousand crabs i went well, i was expecting have turned up uh and have just decided that they will um just gate crash the party right so there's now crabs above and crabs below okay Claw crabs no one wants and crabs sky below. crabs <laughs> yeah no one wants crabs below <laughs> So, okay, so which is uh, putting pressure on the amount of food. Okay. Oh, they're eating as well. well of course. Yeah, they're, oh. yeah, they're, 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 they're crap crap to there to party. <laughs> God damn. So this has turned into teenager posts about a party on Facebook, basically. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Well, amongst all of this absolute carnage, uh, whilst no one I don't think is, is seriously hurt, no one's really having a good time, <laughs> apart from a few species that uh, obviously are enjoying their food um, and have a particular penchant for enjoying chaos <laughs> those people are having an amazing time and the the very mixed vibes i think affect the gantrofax uh and so the party culminates in there being a, an announcement over the tannoy that uh, gantrofax is now approaching its final malting if everyone could please Ooh. put their attention to the center of the room where we will be lowering the gantrofax <laughs> and a huge net like you would see a balloon drop come from is lowered from the ceiling and all the buzzing around of the miniature spaceships with food some of them are trying to like fly upwards still and are just butting into this net that is full with a bulging feathery but also furry somehow also blubbery there's a lot of texture in the gantrofax <laughs> Uh, and it's got this just sort of low groaning noise. I was very tired. And everyone does some polite clapping or other noises that they can make with their various appendages. And uh, the Gantrofax just does one big sigh. And then skin and feathers <laughs> and blubber <laughs> come raining down on the party. It's and just really like sad, like, <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Like a very disgusting foam party. Yes. The Gantrofax is somewhat deflated. The party's not been what anyone hoped for. And whilst, yes, praise be, we can harvest the final malting, the Gantrofax does not want to continue. And it just disappears. Oh, no. no. Leaving only the final malting behind. And cake. And okay. you're going to need all that cake for all the extra crabs. Yeah. <laughs> Curse those crabs. <laughs> That's the end. <laughs> a party so bad it caused a being to cease to exist. <laughs> oh, God. Just went, no, I'm not bothered actually. <laughs> yeah, That's why you don't cut corners. <laughs> You thought they'd have funneled more resources into such an auspicious occasion. I'd say less money yeah. on food and more money on you yeah. know, PR management of warring <laughs> races. Maybe for the, the guests actually turn up. Yes. Yeah. Well, what can I say? Good Adam Flux likes to just roll dice. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Ali. That was great. This has been a studio production from Merely Role Players, starring Natalie Winter, Josh Yard, Strat, Ellie Pitkin, and me, Matt Boothman. Strat planned this season, 
I edited and produced this episode, and our theme music is by Alexander Pankhurst, inspired by Horse Elevator. We were playing games by Keith Baker and Jen Ellis, Jen Martin, Alex Roberts, Shana Germain, Joey Baranko, and Alex Flanagan, all published in the Ultimate Micro RPG book, edited by James D'Amato and available from all good booksellers. Merely Roleplayers is a Foggy Outline production in association with Blackshaw Theatre Company. Until next time, if drama be the food of life, play on! <laughs>